Alma and the Beast by Esme Shapiro. Alma and the Beast. Ooh, look at this beautiful home in the forest. Alma's day began just like any other. She plucked one butter breakfast tulip. No two. Okay, three. She ate one and gave two to her plum poosh butterfly. Then she braided the trees and combed the grass and petted the roof as one does when the day grows chilly and pink. But there was something strange about the garden that day. Was it the hairy buzzing bees making strands of honey in their fuzzy hives? No. Was it the fountains pouring out waves of hair? Not that. Was it the little beast? The little beast? Alma was frightened. She had never seen a hairless, button-nosed beast before. She hid, hopping the beast, hoping the beast would go away. But beasts do not always go away when you close your eyes. Hello, I need your help. I'm terribly, tremendously, stupendously lost, roared the beast. Can you please terribly, tremendously, stupendously lost somewhere else, said Alma. Fine, I'll go be lost up here, huffed the beast and she climbed the mushroom tower. Fine, said Alma, but she was never one to resist a good tree climb. Up, 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 Alma went only to find a very sad beast. What's wrong, she asked. I cannot find my way home, whispered the beast, no longer looking so scary. Alma thought, where would I be without my home? Nowhere, that's where, and that's precisely where the beast was. So Alma helped the beast retrace her steps through the red-headed woods. Over the rock hair cliffs. Alma is helping the beast find her way. Through the bearded mushroom glen. And past the sugar maple mustache bushes. It was there they heard a little whisper. What did they hear? that grew to a loud weep, which finally led them to a grand, whimpering, weeping willow. Once they were there, they went up, 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 and then down, down, down. My home, isn't it just marvelous? sighed the beast as she twirled about so hairlessly. Marvelous indeed, very bald, Alma said, trying not to be rude. All houses are bald here. This is the beast's bald home. Bald means no hair. 
But how do you braid your trees? Asked Alma. Or comb your grass? You certainly can't pet your roof with hair this short. The roof didn't have any hair like at Alma's house. The beast laughed. We do things differently here. So Alma learned how to water the gardens, how to paint the roof, and even how to trim the hedges. But as the day grew chilly and pink, Alma started to miss her hairy home. So she told the beast it was time to go. So soon, said the beast, I never even asked your name. I'm Alma, and I am Mala. I don't know beasts had names. Everybody has a name, silly. And with a big hairy hug, Alma said goodbye to her new friend, Mala. Mala watched Alma as she climbed up, 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 the whimpering, weeping willow, and then all was quiet. But there was one thing left to do. Mala plucked one butter bedtime mushroom. No two. Okay, three. And she ate one and gave two to her chicken. And with that, Mala's day ended like any other. Cozy dozy in bed with her rabbit stuffed animal. Me. Mm.